Hi, it's Terry Denry of the MathWorks. So in this video, we're going to kind of continue with our DC motor and defining kind of the electrical and mechanical components. And the principal thing we're going to introduce here is essentially defining the parameters or, or the properties of these components, that being the mechanical shaft and that being the DC motor. Okay, and so it get us back to kind of, you know, these equations we began with, you know, that the, you know, essentially the motor is going to be defined by its inductance, uh, its resistance, and then this back EMF constant. And the mechanical shaft, it's even simpler. It's you know, just the inertia and the damping coefficient. Okay. Um, but there's also kind of this idea of kind of convention and standards that I want to really address here too, in that you know, there's a big part of the community out there developing systems like this that don't really care specifically what inductance, resistance, and back EMF constants are, for example, okay? And that they introduce kind of this new language, which is very, very useful. And it, we'll see how useful it is as we get into sizing of components. But things like stall condition, and I, I should have it written down somewhere, the stall torque will be important to us. Actually, you'll see it right there, T stall. All right, and it's from these equations that we say, well, what's stall? Well, stall is when it's not moving, you know, meaning that it's kind of constrained in some way that it cannot move, and that we know, you know, kind of how to represent the, uh, you know, what the, the state of the system is with regard to di, dt, i, and omega. And, and so anyways, it's stall, that's where the current will be the stall current, but di, dt will be zero, omega will be zero, d omega, dt will be equal to zero. Uh, similarly, there are conditions for kind of the top speed, which we call the no-load speed, uh, that it reaches and uh, introduce a parameter, parameter omega in L for the no-load speed. Okay, anyways, our whole point of this is to really get to using these more, um, I'll say, intuitive parameterizations, more physical ones, to set things like K and R. All right, so anyways, let's get going on this. All right, and so again, the mechanical shaft's pretty easy. All right, so let's just kind of get in there again. J and B, it's okay with you. I'll just say that's how I'm going to define my mechanical shaft. And the way that we do this in Simulink is we create the mask, the subsystem mask, right? Let's move this up here. All right, and pretty straightforward what we're going to do here. All right, and so we will put in shaft inertia. Oops. We can use regular grammar. So shaft inertia. And you'll recall we call it J. All right. And then damping coefficient. I'm going to put the units in. I'll probably go back and change the shaft inertia too. But let's see, uh, it's Newton meters per radian per second. So that'll mean a multiplication on S and then divide by rad, our radians. We know this to be B. And for the shaft inertia, that's simply kg times meters squared. Okay. All right. And so now when I double click on this block, it offers me the user interface that we see right here. And uh, I'll go with what we've been going with and just make it one and one. And hit run, it will produce the same curve, I, I believe. Yes, we do. And we'll see it settles in at, at uh, half a radian per second for the parameterization that we chose. Now, if we were to put damping constant, you'll see you know, damping constant is pretty important with this simple example. Um, we'll see that it'll get to, I believe, one radian per second, which it does. It takes a little more time to settle. So we have very you know, clearly have impacted the dynamic response of that system by defining that shaft differently. Now, the motor is a little trickier, you know, because again, there's essentially more parameters, but we're also kind of introducing these ideas of no load speed and stall torque, 
right? And so it really will come down to setting R, L, and K, right? But we're going to do it. Create mask, parameters, edit. By choosing a nominal voltage, okay, again, I usually don't set units on voltage, and then I'm going to call this VN, all right, and so now let's do stall torque. I'll call this T stall. And no load speed. This would be radians per second. And I'll call that WNL. And then the last one is, you know, the, none of that stuff really has anything to do with inductance. Okay, and so we're just, we'll just call it inductance and do a direct set on our parameter L, right? So this, I like kind of sticking with the, um, the metric units. And so even though one Henry is a big, big amount of inductance, we'll just call it that. Okay. And I think we're doing pretty good there. Now, now the issue here is that we still don't know what R and K are. And I'll just kind of, again, quickly take you through the derivation. If we take these equations, plug in what the condition for stall, as well as the condition for no load, we'll get some algebraic equations, which will allow us to solve for R and K. And so from stall, you get an assessment of R that we see right there. And if we then take that and combine it with the no load condition, we can solve for K and get that out of there too. And then R ends up looking like that, right? And so I'm going to just kind of put this on the part of the screen that we're not going to capture, but I'm going to kind of look at it as I set these values, right? And so it's, again, it's all defined in the parameterization that we just set up. And so let's just go K is equal to VN divided by WNL, the no load speed, and R is equal to VN squared divided by W and L divided by T stall. And I put the little semicolon to just suppress that so it doesn't show up in that lab when we make these assignments, all right? And so with that, we got all this information, all right? And I just say nominal voltage and inductance, those are generally things that you're gonna get from a motor catalog. So as you purchase your motors, you know, you will work with the catalog and make sure you choose the appropriate motor. And clearly, you know, prop in the, the, the world of hardware, making the right choice of components is always the critical thing to make sure you do right. Okay, so anyways, and in that, that's kind of where you figure out what nominal voltage and inductance. And anyways, choices like that need to be made. And usually inductance is really small. I'll just kind of put in a nominal value right now of 1 e to the minus 5. And not exactly sure what the right values for torque, stall torque, and no load speed should be. You'll see here I actually kind of have it inverse from what I did in the first video. I think I had no load speed above. But anyways, it doesn't matter. It's all going to be calculated just fine for us. And uh, again, I didn't do make those choices in a way that I was assuring myself I get the same response that we had before. And certainly I did not get the same response. So it's essentially, here's a real motor with real values. And um, something that kind of is going to allow you to go to those catalogs and make a good choice. Generally, you know the top three. And from those catalogs, generally, that's where you find out what the inductance will be. All right. So anyways. I think we're now ready to go off and uh, start making some good component selections. And, and it's as we do this, we'll kind of get into, well, what is the mission of the motor and the mechanical shaft? And so we'll add a little more context and things will get, in my opinion, uh, even more interesting. Thank you.